The Viper pattern, 38 feet in length. It's actually a foot longer than it was last season, and today we'll, this pattern will be used exclusively. The players will be playing left or right of the shaded area based on rev rate. The high hook players, big hook, they're going to be left of that, throwing into that shaded area. The straighter players are going to be playing right of that, right around first arrow. And this is what the professionals averaged on this pattern last season. You can see almost 27 pins a game higher than the amateurs. That was your Lumber Liquidators Know the Wood. Here's Wes Malott leading by 11 as he takes to the stage for his sixth frame. And Rob, on a sad note, our, uh, the head of lane maintenance out here, Mark Seventeen, his mother passed away last night. The PBA tour, and along with myself, would like to send out our condolences to his family. Well, we had a 7-10 Dang, opportunity last week with Sean Rash, and you said, if somebody can do it, Sean Rash falls in that category. I'm pretty sure Wes Malott also could be characterized as a potential 7-10 pickup. Again, it has only been accomplished three times on television. The bedpost. Wes Malott is going to bring some heat with this shot. Let it rip, Wes. Couldn't pull that one out of the pit. So Wes's first open frame, so both have had one now, and the open frame by Angelo in the fifth, not quite as damaging as it once was. Wes Malott has not missed the pocket in this, well, excuse me, he has once. He went light, left the two pin. Red Angelo's missed the pocket twice. Going Brooklyn and leaving a 3 6 10. Found the pocket that time. Did Wes Malott. So Brad Angelo from Lockport, New York, about 20 minutes outside of Buffalo, will step up and we want to remind you for all the latest and authentic. PBA memorabilia, head over to PBA.com, click on the auction tab there. You can bid on items such as game used jerseys, bowling balls, and autographed items. It's all there at PBA.com. Brad Angelo, three times a bridesmaid, looking for his first career title. He's been a member of the tour since 2002. Last year was second in Chicago. Danger zone out there. <laughs> that, that ball's teetering on the edge. And obviously, there's a little friction spot there, but you better get it off your hand perfect. Watch this. This ball is on the one board. I don't know if he was excited because he threw a great shot or because that ball stayed on the lane. Yeah, let me tell you, that right gutter is loaded with a bunch of sirens right now calling for the ball to come their way. Nice use of Homer in the Iliad and Odyssey right there. It's hard to work that in the bowl. Um, not seeing too many back-to-back -back really nice tosses today. Angelo did start with back-to-back -back strikes and strikes in the sixth and the seventh as well, but very little carryover. And remember, he missed this spare in the fifth frame, the 3-6-10. Good the left. ball to the right of the three pin, and the bowling ball will cover all three pins. He left the 10 in the fifth. That was his first and only open frame. There you go. That's good there. He maintains a nine pin lead, but Wes Malott's working on a strike in the seventh. Brad Angelo had the choice of starting lanes because he was the higher seed. He chose to have Wes Malott finish on this right lane, and right now this right lane looks a little tricky. The lead is his with a strike. Gives it the little Darth Vader in the thumb hole to get that perfect feel. 
talking to Wes yesterday. He said this week he was kind of able to go around the pattern. Can you roll it, elaborate on that? Well, you're not seeing it right now oh, because boy, the lanes have be not fun. broken down enough. Wes Mallott starting that ball just right of second arrow and actually playing further right than he's played all week. So he was playing left and kind of slow hooking it. Yeah, and you're not going to see that unless he gets through this match and gets into the title match where the lanes break down enough and dry up enough for him to do that. Takes care of the 2-5, but he, he knows he had an opening there. Yeah, and he and knows, let it slide. Right, and he could have taken the lead with a strike there. And the bad part is that he right. has to finish the match on the right lane, and he's only struck once there, and he doesn't look like he's very comfortable on that lane. So I, look, we, I look for this, this shot to be high flush. So we go to the foundation frame. Both bowlers will enter it off of spares. This he's one's smart. still anyone's game with Walter Ray Williams Jr. waiting in the wings. Get down! He likes that lane. Brad Angelo does not. Brad's got a finish on the left lane. Wes Malott's got a finish on the tricky right. But look at this. This is good stuff and good pin carry. Head pin goes to the sidewall. It takes out the seven late. Keeps him in the match. It gives him... The possibility of striking out in the 10th and shooting 215. Brad Angelo can strike out 9th and 10th and shoot 224. Angelo, four strikes, two in each lane so far. Make it five strikes. And you can see that there's a little bit of room on that right lane for Brad Angelo. The shot before in the 7th was... A couple of boards to the right of that. It sucked up and went high flush. That ball there, high flush. It's going to come down to what he can do on this left lane. He needs two strikes. And then some loose change to move on. We open up the 10th. Both bowlers off of strikes in the ninth. Bright Angelo has never won on the PBA Tour. time ball. Yeah, that was a very confident shot there. He knows what the score is, and he knows he only needs two strikes and two pins. Bang, high flush. One more strike puts him in the 220s with reasonable count. One more strike, and he doesn't even need to keep it on the lane. Or, I'm sorry, he does need two. So I was right the first time. You two strikes, two pins. You usually are. Not usually. <laughs> now, if this is Norm Duke, right now he'd be saying, re-rack, please. You think? Maybe. Big shot right here. Fist, Brad. He's got to keep it on the lane, knock two down. He's going to move on. He made the right adjustments on that left lane. He kept moving out, moving out. As you see, he takes out his interchangeable thumb and goes from one ball to the next. And for, for the fans at home, they're looking to get the same feel and multiple bowling balls. That interchangeable thumb is the only way to go. Needs just two. We'll get it. Eight is enough. Brad Angelo, the three seed, moves on to take on Walter Ray Williams Jr. You got to give him a lot of credit, Rob. He was fine, getting himself fine-tuned on that on that left lane. He got a couple of breaks, made a big spare when he left the three six ten again in the eighth frame, and just got it dialed in, and then made the big shots there in the tenth frame. Brad Angelo, a member of the PBA Tour since 2002. Three times a runner-up, has made 14 televised shows. And now he is two wins away from his first ever title as Wes Malott finishes it off. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I don't think this is the last we'll see of Wes Malott. No way. 
It's too good a player. Like I mentioned earlier, he led the qualifying round, got into match play, struggled in match play, 